Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Maddie and today we are doing a little bit of Sunday plant care. I am clearly still in my pajamas. My hair is still a mess, but I wanted to take care of my Tratoscantias a little bit today. They're kind of in a sad, sorry state. And I apologize, I actually started filming this video before showing like a before picture really of the one Tratoscantia that I had downstairs. Um, but basically what I'm doing is just like restarting my Tratoscantia I'm gonna prop and chop and or chop and prop <laughs> and then I'm gonna like restart them all down the road probably in a separate video so if you're kind of curious about this process go ahead and watch with me and let me know if this is something you have to do with your Tratoscantias This is the removed pile of dead leaves that all came from the center of the plant and obviously now it's looking quite bare like a lot of these stems don't have leaves now for like six inches or so and then the leaf that is next is very clearly starting to go like these yellow ones here so I'm kind of trying to decide there's not necessarily room in the pot to put in more cuttings to kind of restart the fullness up here I'm sure this is I would be curious to know how rebound it is so I'm kind of thinking about maybe fully chopping up this plant and just like restarting entirely um i don't know for sure but i have obviously lots of plant and i have a big one upstairs that also needs some work like this as well so i'm trying to decide what i want to do but i love how like solid purple and how bright purple the backs of the leaves are and this is like one of my favorite plants just trying to scanty in general that being said, I hate that this always happens. So I have decided that I'm fully just going to chop up this plant, um, like entirely, and I'm going to remove it from this pot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start chopping, doing rough chops, and then I will go through and kind of cut up the cuttings in a, in a better way for putting them in water. But like this, this plant has some pretty crazy things going on. Not that I think you can probably see them in the frame the way that the video is set, but whatever. So for some of these cuttings, like these really, really small ones, I'm going to actually just lay them aside and I think I might put them in moss since I have some propagation boxes upstairs. But for these bigger ones, I'm going to do what I normally do and just pull off the bottom few leaves. I did leave the nodes on there that had the dried up, like dead crunchy leaves on there. I'm kind of curious to know if putting them in water will kind of reactivate them. However, the kind of bummer about doing that is that I already have these like kind of dying leaves up here. So I think what I'm actually going to do is just pull off any of the bad looking leaves. And I realize I need to go get some scissors again. And so I usually like to have three or so nodes to put in water. So like this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that into one of the jars. I'm probably gonna have to rearrange things at the end. Um, but same goes here, pulling off all of these not great looking leaves, which for some of them go pretty far up this vine. And then trim off the bottom. This one has pretty bad leaves looking, going almost all the way up to the top and actually the topmost leaf is pretty crispy. So I'm gonna pull that one off and hopefully I get some branching happening, but I'm just gonna right there.
going to keep this really long piece because I figure I can probably do some wet stick propagations with it once I pull off some leaves and some sphagnum moss. Because uh, why not, I guess. <laughs> I have a second one upstairs of these Tradescantia um, that I will probably be doing something similar with. Maybe today, maybe not today. But I find that this is something I have to do pretty common with my Tradescantia is basically just like scrap the plant and start it over because it eventually just starts looking really unhealthy. Um, so let me know if that's something you also experience. Especially with my Tradescantia, I think it's called maybe like White Stripe or something. Like that one for sure gets restarted. Like I currently only have one propagation of it in my sphagnum box because I could not keep that thing alive for longer than a few months without it doing this exact thing. And this plant also has all these like weird <laughs> turns and stuff in it because it was like growing up against a wall and I moved it, not moved it, but I like I would move the stems and stuff away from the wall every now and then just to make sure that it wasn't growing any roots like into the wall. But that's why there's all of these, like this is a perfect zigzag. <laughs> I've decided I'm just not gonna keep this. Like, I have so many Triscantia cuttings, I don't need to worry about doing wet sticks. But for these ones, I do think I will go ahead and put them in a sphagnum box just because they're so small. Well, I actually have that bottle. No, I'm just gonna put them in sphagnum. Um, I'm just peeling off the bottom leaves again. I could honestly just put them in a little cup of sphagnum. They're so small. <laughs> it's so interesting to me when plants put out these really small stems after putting out like really big ones, but I guess that's just a sign that that thing was root bound. So I will go ahead and do that. And these are the three jars of water propagations I have. I did my best to keep some of the length on some of the vines. So like right here um, and here, for example, so I just need to find a place to put them. I think I might just go ahead and put them back in the same place where the Triscantia was to start. Um, I'm also really curious to see how root bound this pot was, but I might actually just go grab my other Triscantia from upstairs and do the same thing. So here's this Triscantia. These leaves are all a little bit worse for wear. They're very, very purple on the back because of being right next to this window that I normally leave open. So I think this might just not be the best place to have a Triscantia. Um, but there are parts for sure that can be salvaged. So I want to do that, but I think the easiest thing to do might be to like cut some of these before taking it out of this hanger, just because otherwise it's probably gonna be a nightmare. So this is what it's looking like after I got it out of the hanger. As you can see, a lot of these leaves are very, very bleached, but like I said, very purple on the back. So I think that's just not the best place to have a Tradescantia. And honestly, I don't necessarily need another one of these. Um, I'm probably okay with just having one plant. That being said, I'm still going to chop it up and if anything, I can maybe give it away to some people or something like that. So 
gonna do the very similar process on this as I did on that and honestly probably put the cuttings in the same place. So now here we are with all the cuttings. <laughs> I probably could have done more than three jars. I don't have any more jars. I would have had to do like just normal glasses or mugs or something. And then this is the pile that I need to put in some sphagnum. This is the massacre. And then the remaining like dead pots essentially. <laughs> I didn't have any room in my other prop boxes. So I had to go ahead and make a new one with some wet sphagnum that I just had soaking for about 15 minutes or so. Um, I do have it fairly wet, but what I'm going to do is just leave the lid off of the box, probably for today, and then put it on. And I already had taken off the bottom leaves on here, so I can just go ahead and kind of stick these in. Um, and in my experience, Tradescantia of this variety, which it's Tradescantia Zebrina purple or something, I don't know, like I got it initially off someone from Facebook Marketplace and I don't remember what they named it or if it was even the correct name, um, but anyway, it roots like in what feels like four hours, honestly, so just gonna pop these in here for a little bit and they'll probably, it's hard to say, but I'm guessing they'll root faster than the ones in the water, that tends to be my experience anyway. Um, but this is gonna be an, a full little propagation box, I'm realizing. Goodness. I don't think I realized how many cuttings there were. Okay, well, that's probably as good as it's going to get. I should have had a little bit more moss but oh well so there we go and like I said I'm gonna leave this off but normally I would just have it like on here fairly loose I typically will do like one or two of the corners or so but it is pretty wet um, and since some of these are a bit taller they are gonna get kind of smushed down a little bit which is why I only do this for really small triscantia cuttings since I don't have very many tall containers I should probably get more but anyway there we go Oh, right, I'm leaving that off today. <laughs> well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Some pretty simple plant chores for this Sunday. I actually now have to figure out what to put in that hanger where that one Triscantia was. Um, I'm kind of thinking of maybe a spider plant or this one pothos that I normally take to work, but I could leave home. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I will be sure to make another video once I'm ready to basically re remake the Triscantia. <laughs>